Let's continue to the next speaker. I said that first of all, you have to uh, learn the system. Uh, we have to understand whether or not the system is ready for the digitization. Uh, we have to understand the problems and challenges. Uh, and uh, this issue is to be covered by uh, the director or head of the association of the uh, primary school. Uh, principles uh, in the Czech Republic and who will speak about uh, this situation, how the Czech uh, primary schools are ready for the digitization. So let's hand over to Mr. Zait. Very good morning. My name is Luboš Zait and uh, let us have a look at uh, the status of digitalization of the Czech education system. You see the first slide um, and the heading uh, is uh, finished with a question mark. The question mark uh, has a reason why, because the Czech school, Czech education system uh, is digitized, uh, digitalized, uh, but there are many, many questions uh, linked to it. And we will try to answer at least some of those. First of all, uh, let me get back to the past. The reason is that uh, digitalization is uh, nothing new, nothing that uh, uh, would be here all of a, all of a sudden. Uh, it's, uh, it has taken already some time, and the first mentions uh, date back uh, uh, to 2001 in the so-called white paper, where uh, the uh, slogan, speedy development of information and communication technologies uh, appeared. At that time, it was rather a declaration showing us uh, that uh, something like that might happen and will happen, but uh, it didn't have a major effect at that time yet. Uh, well, so in 2014, uh, the policy of educa uh, strategy of educational policy of the Czech Republic uh, by 2020 was created, was drafted, uh, and the letter was then linked uh, to the digital education strategy by 2020. And at that time, the assumption was that everything will run very smoothly, everything will be resolved, and everything will be okay. Nevertheless, uh, uh, it was rather talking. Uh, it was more talking rather than doing, and the strategy did not uh, has not been implemented. And uh, what a shame, because this strategy is uh, strategies uh, delineated uh, some aspect that could uh, advance the Czech education uh, uh, more. The situation got a bit more complicated uh, as uh, everything uh, remained on paper only. And that's why we come to the third stage, uh, namely the current strategy of educational policy of the Czech Republic uh, 2030 plus. It's a concept uh, establishing uh, rules for uh, various areas of education, and one of them being digital education. It contains three basic points uh, going across the whole strategy. First of all, support, uh, supporting uh, the digital uh, literacy of all pupils. The second area, supporting digital competence of all teachers, uh, which is uh, something uh, uh, highly needed and we cannot do about without it. And the third area is the reduction of disparities and prevention of digital, digital gap. Uh, uh, and this is very important because we should really uh, assure the minimum uh, disparities, differences and gaps between students and between teachers. Uh, unlike the previous two strategies, uh, this uh, 2020 strategy starts uh, to be implemented through specific steps. Uh, 
And uh, to this is linked uh, one particular document, uh, review of a framework educational uh, program, uh, the so-called small uh, RVP review. RVP is an abbreviation for the framework educational program. What we mean by the small uh, RVP small review? It means that uh, it uh, focuses on only one smaller area, namely informatics, uh, that should be reflected then in new areas. Why such a review is to be implemented? Uh, let us try to remember when was the last time when uh, uh, the RVP program was uh, uh, reviewed. And uh, obviously, uh, we have to adapt uh, uh, the documents that uh, we work with uh, to be able to catch up the fast development. And uh, that's uh, true in all other fields, but I will come to this later. Why not to wait for the so-called uh, major or large uh, review? Uh, the reason is that uh, the small uh, review has been only launched uh, and the process will uh, will not come before the period of at least two years. Uh, it is true that uh, the communication around the introduction of this small review were uh, not very easy, but that's the fact. What is the content uh, of this review? It uh, concerns uh, the primary schools and the lower secondary schools, uh, and it covers uh, uh, various uh, areas, uh, what can, you can see on the screens. and. Uh, uh, the things that were taught in the past uh, uh, in other very different subjects, um, be it, for instance, uh, informatics, uh, digital technology, are currently shifted uh, uh, into main subjects. For instance, Word should be uh, taught in the Czech language uh, subject, uh, Excel in maths uh, subject, etc. And informatics as such uh, would be shifted to the area of data, algorithm, programming and digital technologies. Uh, such a shift uh, may seem to be revolutionary. Uh, that's something that seems uh, brand new, but if we look uh, at other educational systems, so we see that uh, this is something that uh, works already for quite some time in the UK or many other countries. Uh, what does this uh, say to us? Uh, uh, it says that uh, we are not totally ready for such a review. When I mentioned the UK, so there, within informatics, uh, uh, the BBC prepared uh, all uh, teaching materials uh, and uh, the teacher just downloads it from the public media and may start uh, using them right, right away. Well, uh, I do hope that uh, uh, we uh, will be in the same situation soon. Uh, so, number of uh, lessons or hours uh, taught. Uh, so, uh, at the primary uh, school level, two hours uh, per week, and uh, at the uh, lower secondary, four hours per week. But the question is whether we do have uh, 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 the adequate staff. It seems that currently we don't have sufficient number of uh, teachers who are able to uh, cope with programming quickly. Well, um, from the 1st of September 2023, uh, the primary schools will start uh, uh, using the system and uh, one year later it will apply to all uh, grades in the lower secondary schools. Uh, what is also important is to, supporting, is, uh, to support digital literacy and uh, as well as uh, the so-called well-being. Uh, in other words, uh, that pupils uh, uh, feel well and want to work, uh, enjoy it. However, uh, what happened was the COVID. Uh, the plans were great, uh, everything seemed bright, and all of a sudden uh, something happened that we, we've never expected. 
And uh, COVID brought uh, a great number of uh, problems, not only to schools, but also to individual pupils. Uh, I don't want to speak uh, about problems only, because uh, they brought some positives as well. Uh, one of them being uh, the acceleration of the Czech education system digitization. In spite of uh, 2020 review, it was mentioned that uh, the educational system uh, should be digitized, uh, so the outcomes were not bright. And all of a sudden, once uh, the COVID uh, appeared, so within a few weeks, uh, the digitalization was here. But uh, that, that required us to provide equipment to schools, to teachers, to equip to pupils, uh, to find uh, adequate problems, pro programs, uh, and uh, uh, all other things had to be done uh, so that the pupils uh, can learn even though they were not at schools. And for that, uh, we were very much assisted by the digital technologies. Thanks to digital technologies, uh, pupils uh, uh, started to organize uh, their work themselves. Uh, they were responsible for their work. Uh, they were able to uh, to work uh, individually. And what is worth mentioning it as well is the effect of uh, state subsidies uh, into investments, uh, especially money flowing for uh, investments uh, equipment at schools. When speaking about technology, what is the current state of affairs in schools? Well, in terms of hardware, our education system uh, is struggling with funding, and of course this affects digital technology as well. Seemingly, there is enough uh, equipment, but it is obsolete, and it is not up to scratch in terms of either computers or some other necessary material. Modern elements of being should become a consistent part of the setup. There, the situation is even worse. 3D printing has been sort of developing, and this applies to robotics as well. However, there is no uh, system of systematic approach to that and virtual reality is on the sidelines and these are things that are essential and we should undoubtedly support them. Another problem linked to schools today is lack of connectivity, internal and external. That means we have no strong internet connection, we don't have internal connectivity having to do with Wi-Fi networks and other such equipment. Nowadays, we have far more technology that needs to be linked up to our networks, and we simply do not have a good enough capacity. And of course, the renewal and revitalization of hardware. Of course, there is more and more hardware, but we still lack capacities and uh, things to ensure that. What about software? Uh, software is growing geometrically for all sorts of purposes within schools, regardless of whether we perform an inventory of communication or education. The, pro the problem is that schools have a very a huge disparity in computer equipment. It's different in every school. It is highly, let's say, creative in terms of the schools providing for uh, their own software. And then, of course, there is a problem with compatibility which, of course, is manifested in the lack of connectivity with the software of uh, national state institutions, uh, for example, births and death 
uh, registers or other uh, bodies. Uh, so this is one of the issues that should be dealt with in the long run, which also applies to communication platforms, which has manifested itself during COVID. We were looking for a platform to communicate with pupils and parents. Uh, it, the diversity here is huge. Uh, pupils and parents kept looking for uh, sources of the information that we were giving to them rather than it being the other way around. The most important thing about the system is, of course, people. Teachers tend to be a, of a higher age average, but this, as COVID proved, is not always an obstacle. The experience of age comes in handy, and we find uh, that handling all sorts of system tools has nothing to do with age. Another critical aspect is education. Education in digital technologies deals with um, the solutions that individual schools or teachers go for. But, of course, this is not systematic. COVID taught us many lessons. We had to adapt, and I would like to thank everyone who managed to cope, and that was the majority. Now, the pre-graduation preparedness of teachers. Pedagogical faculties should prepare its graduates for them entering a digital environment in which they have to find their way, obviously. And what is happening now, uh, what I mentioned, is the so-called RVP reform, where the National Pedagogical Institute and other bodies uh, are working on a system of education for teachers. We don't know whether this is systemic enough, but I do believe that well, they will manage in order for this reform to be launched at the originally planned date. Now, who is responsible for all of this? Of course, it is the state uh, via the Ministry of Education and Regions. Recently, the communication with the ministry has improved significantly, and hopefully this will continue. Then uh, it is the so-called the founder. We have founders that understand this environment, and then, of course, it works uh, without any problems. And then we have founders who are not major supporters. Then educational institution, institutions such as the National Pedagogical Institute and regional institutes uh, that prepare training and education for the digital field. Unfortunately, not all of the programs have a high enough standard, but I do believe that oh, we can sort them out to uh, make them useful and handy for schools. And of course, the principal, the director of the school is the ultimate accountable person. He is responsible or she is responsible for the innovative character of engaging the school in certain fields such as robotics, etc. So he or she, the principal, is the leader of, for the direction this system should take. Now, how to teach, how to educate. We have three aspects today. That means on the spot, which is important. And of course, electronic media should only be supportive because the primary um, 
important subject is the person, and all of the technological aspects should only aid him, support him in providing uh, the teaching as such, but we mustn't lose the human factor. Distance learning, which has been a bit of a headache for us, uh, but after the year and a half, I think we've learned how to handle it. Uh, hopefully, we won't need it much anymore. And hybrid teaching. When we have a part of the pupils in school, a part at home or quarantined, this is something that has just started up. This is not uh, ideal for the teacher because they have to double their effort. But uh, with the use of digital te uh, technologies, we can cope with the situation, although we do not have uh, enough background technology to provide parallel teaching in the classroom and outside of it. Opportunities. Well, we have to look for them. Digital technologies can intensify and improve teaching as such, but we must learn how to apply them correctly. We can also involve students in terms of making a teaching entertaining, so because they are handling tools that they're familiar with, or making teaching more attractive with the help of 3D technologies, virtual reality, etc. And of course, bringing things closer to practical experience when we can, as mentioned, use virtual reality to, for example, organize um, um, on the spot plant visit without having to physically go there. This is something that is very important for secondary education. Now, what are the risks? <laughs> The, the risks are, of course, coming from, from external sources, such as blackouts, um, network failures. These are things uh, that have appeared, although minimally, we have to obviously not forget that they can have a greater impact. And then the risks for students, for pupils, we should know how to eliminate them. We're talking about the dependency on te technologies, uh, trying to escape from reality, or cyberbullying, which is widespread, unfortunately, and insufficient work with data, literacy, uh, of course, we can acquire a lot of data, but processing this data is starting to become a problem. And then online threats, which we cannot identify perhaps right now, but let us prepare ourselves for the fact that they um, will be there eventually. What can we do about it? Unify platforms and schools, improve internet connectivity, improve hardware and software, we can apply other tools, um, cloud, um, we uh, should train, educate our teachers to uh, teach them how to work under new conditions and create new personnel positions such as IT administrators for schools. And of course, the involvement of others, for example, factories, businesses who deal in electronics. And what about the future? Well, that's a question. The future is yet to be seen. Hopefully, it's a future that will help us progress, that it will be an education providing a quality standard of teaching for our students, and technology should assist us in that. Thank you for your attention.
Have a digital day. Thank you for this very difficult task because, of course, we are dealing with something similar. I have a number of questions. So now let us hand over I have a question. Could we involve this program in teaching directly? Yes, there is a general framework being created. Individual aspects are being developed. So uh, this will include aspects from all areas of digital technology. So these things will be taken into consideration. I notice an interesting phenomena that the teachers independently uh, start uploading presentations. They record their lectures and provide colleagues with material for hybrid learning. Does the program take this into consideration as well? Education is highly specific in, in this respect. No, companies usually protect their know-how and try not to share it. However, in education, in primary education, we got used to the fact that what we are doing, we want to share with others. We want to provide our experience to others. So in this respect, within other programs, several databases were created where these things were shared and the joint aspects will be shared, used as education material. But as mentioned, it would be a good idea for the state to create a database that uh, everyone would be able to use, as they have in England. Of course, a question about COVID, and you already mentioned it. I know that we can't prepare ourselves for everything, but do you at least have an idea for potential situations of like, what if this will last so long, so long, so long? Do you have any ideas of what to do? Well, when the pandemic started, we were frankly a bit shocked and we try to find whatever we could in order to provide a continuation uh, of our education uh, program. Uh, hopefully the situation will not deteriorate. So we are ready for the fact that if uh, deterioration would take place and if we would have to go uh, for distance learning, we would have hardware and software tools available the teachers and the students have some experience with the system, so hopefully we might be able to go for distance learning without major problems, but hopefully that won't happen again. You also mentioned some challenges and competences, uh, how the teachers cope with it and how the students cope with it, uh, some social problems. Uh, do you see a sort of critical point or points uh, uh, showing us that uh, this is a wall that uh, seems uh, unsurmountable? Well, we have done some mappings, uh, mapping of the situation. We know where the problems are and we try to eliminate them as quickly as possible. And uh, what you mentioned, uh, namely the uh, education of teachers, is very important. Uh, the areas uh, in question, be it programming uh, systems and, uh, and uh, similar things, uh, uh, are things um, rather new 
there are many teachers who see it as something uh, really new for them. And it is important that uh, they have to try to cope with it. Uh, and uh, we should avoid situations when the students are sort of uh, brighter than teachers. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, these topics uh, seem uh, unsurmountable. All these challenges seem unsurmountable, but uh, uh, obviously we have to try to surmount them. And thank you very much for your presentation and for answering your questions. Thank you, and very nice time, and uh, good luck.